Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to another video. In this video, we're gonna be doing a, another leak code problem and we're gonna solve it using dynamic programming. So the name of this problem is maximum subarray and the prompt is given an integer array nums, find the contiguous subarray containing at least one number, which has the t largest sum and return its sum. So contiguous subarray, meaning that the elements have to be consecutive and we have to find the largest subarray within the array. So in this input array given, the output is gonna be six and the reason is we have four, negative one, two, and one. Um, so since it's contiguous, you can't just pick like the like one, four, two, four, you know, they have to be consecutive. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this input over. And I'm gonna give myself some space to work with. Let's see, okay, I cannot type today. Okay, so now when you're interviewing, you want to you know, initially the optimal solution might not come to you. So sometimes you wanna just start with like a brute force solution here. So you could say, okay, so one thing we can do is we can have two pointers and we can uh, do like a double for loop through the entire input array and get go through every subarray, get the max value there and, um, and return the max. Um, obviously this is not gonna be a very fast solution. Um, it's actually gonna be give you an exponential time complexity. Um, what we can do here is we can use additional memory to come up with a uh, much faster solution. So let's say we create a second table here. Um, initially what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from left to right and we're gonna see what the maximum subarray is gonna be from basically the beginning up to the certain iteration that we're at in that uh, in the table. So initially we're gonna have uh, minus two because we only have one element in here. Uh, then once we get to this one, we can either do one or two things. We can either start a new subarray at one, which is gonna give us a value of one, or we can take negative two and one. So what we can do is simply just take the max of those two values um, and one is obviously greater than negative one. So we'll put a one in here. The next value that we get to, we can either add the negative three and start a new subarray there, or we can add it to what we, cur what we currently have as our max. Um, so it's either gonna be negative three or negative two. We wanna take the greater value, so we're gonna stick with negative two. We get to the four, we can either add the four or four plus negative two. We're gonna stick with the four. We get to negative one, we could either put the negative one in here or we can put negative one plus four, which is gonna be three, which is greater. So we'll put a three in there. So up to this point now, we have our value of four, which is Given this subarray, the given this array here, the max that we can get in the subarray, the contiguous subarray is four. So let's just keep on going. So we have a two, so we can either put two or two plus three. So it's gonna be five. And let me give a space to line this up. So next thing is one, we can either put a one or six. Next value is either gonna be a negative five or a negative five plus six, so one. Next value is either gonna be a four or a four plus a one, so five. So if we look through our second array here, we see that the greatest value is six, which is what the output is in our input. And that's because the value up to here is going to be four plus negative one plus two plus one. So given this second ray, we don't know where the actual contiguous subarray is, but 
that's not what the problem is asking. It just wants the max value that you can get, which is six. So the time complexity here is going to be big O of N. That's because we're iterating once through the input array. And the space complexity here is also going to be big O of N because we are allocating a second array, which is the size of the input array. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and code this up. So we need two things here. We need our table, which is going to be a new array, the size of the input array. Then we need our max value. Um, we could get it at the end, but there's no need to go through an extra iteration to get the max. We can just keep a running max as we're going. So our max is going to be nums zero. And then we initially need to set our table as well, right? So table zero is going to be equal to nums zero. Cool, now we wanna loop through the input array. And we don't wanna start at zero, right? Since we already have the value of zero, we wanna just go ahead and start at one. I uh, really can't type today, okay. Length, I plus plus. Okay, so let's see. We wanted to set the value of table at I equal to math.max of so let's see here. So we either wanted to set it to the next value or our current value, right? So that's just going to be nums i, or we wanted to set it to nums i plus what was the value in our table array, like the previous value. So it's going to be nums i plus table i minus one. Then we want to update our max variable. So it's either going to be what it currently is or the value that we just calculated, which is in table I. And then finally, we want to return max. So let's go ahead and run that. And let's see here. Okay, so the error here was that I put math.max here, but I never actually set our max variable to that value. So let's go ahead and try that. And there we go. So we have runtime 87 percentile and memory usage of 99 percentile. So there you have it. Using dynamic programming, we're able to get our solution from a exponential time complexity to a linear time complexity. Um, so hopefully you can see the power of dynamic programming and um, you know, it can get a lot more complex than this, but the idea is going to be the same. So that's all for this video. Um, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.